Hey everyone, um, in this video I'm going to sort of interview or talk to a fellow teacher and we're gonna talk about something that she is offering which is a course uh, that uses Brazilian movies um, in order to teach and I will leave some uh, information down in the description prices and dates and how to enroll and yeah if you think this is a nice thing for you then please enroll and it should be fun and interesting and it should help you um, acquire vocabulary and a little bit of grammar stuff like that so now i'll leave you with our conversation see ya Olá. Oi, tudo bem? Tudo certo. Uh, então, você pode se apresentar um pouco, Camila? A gente vai conversar sobre algumas coisas hoje, né? Gostaria que você se apresentasse primeiro. Sim, sim eu esqueci de te perguntar. A conversa, então, em português. I don't know. Do you want to speak English? Because, yeah, because the students that are going to be interested in this... I don't know. It's up, it's up to you. It's up to you. We can speak English. Yeah. Maybe in English. Mm -hmm. Maybe in English. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Definitely. All right. Okay. Cool. Uh, so thank you for this opportunity, Jackson. Thank thank you for inviting me to be here today with you. I'm very excited and even a bit nervous, as you see. Uh, so I am Camila, um, and I am a professional Portuguese teacher. I have been teaching Portuguese for over eight years now. I teach in the same platform uh, that Jackson, that you teach. Um, mm -hmm. And I am from Minas Gerais, I'm from Belo Horizonte. Although I don't think I have a, an accent from Minas Gerais anymore. I don't know if that happened to you, but like over time, people started asking me, where are you from? Because I think mm -hmm. we have to kind of slow down, enunciate words. And here in Minas Gerais, we tend to say them all at once. <laughs> that sometimes people, yeah. they, they, they ask me, where are you from? Are you, are you from here? And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, I'm from here. But I've learned how mm -hmm. to speak, so I guess. You do have the words of the Mineiro sometimes, you do, like you right? said, why today? Why? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Because I was talking to you when you when you were Brazilian, mm -hmm. and with time. But if I spend an entire day teaching, I think my my Portuguese is a bit is is, is a bit different, and I'm more I'm, I'm, so I am more mine. polite. I I am all please, thank you, excuse me. Because yeah. nurses, they tend to be very, very polite. I mean, we are polite, yeah. but, you know, what am I doing? I get they... it. Some of my students, you know, sometimes they're like teaching and then somebody knocks the door and then you talk to them like your family or something. And then you speak a little differently. Mm -hmm. So my students in the past have noticed that, oh, with me, you talk a certain way. And then with your family, yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah, because I'm being less teacherish with them yeah, teacherish yeah <laughs> yeah so so i guess th th that's for now what i could say about myself that's a good introduction mm -hmm, on the mineiro soul <laughs> um but anyway we're here because actually you're doing something about teaching portuguese as well right that mm -hmm. i think is really interesting and i think that it's actually something that my students lack in me or in interactions with me because I do not have that uh, cultural background sometimes, I think, or that mm -hmm. movie thing or that Brazilian culture thing in my lessons, at least, right? Mm -hmm. I am Brazilian anyway, but I may not bring those components into the lessons themselves. Mm -hmm. so, so I'd like you now to say, what is it that you're doing or that you have been doing over the past few months and years? Yeah, well, before I go there, I, I do think you bring components. I have watched your uh, channel and I think there are many ways of bringing like Brazilian components to our classes. True. Yeah, so so for example, I, I don't know how you approach this, but 
um, I, I remember a student of mine, she, she came to Brazil to live here uh, and well, I don't know how it is in your state, but here sometimes we are, do you drink alcohol? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so so mm -hmm. do you eat meat? Do you go to barbecues and things too? Sure. Sure. Right. The so whole some package. <laughs> the whole package. Uh, so sometimes you, we are like in a barbecue and we are like drinking and listening to music at, and talking and we're like we should do this again next week and everyone says yeah let's do it again and then my student thought that just because they said it that they were going to do they were going to do actually because she thought well they said they were doing again next weekend but then she she got there and no barbecue at the person's house. But then I had oh, to yeah. taught her that if we don't make a movement like throughout the week, it's not going to happen because sometimes like in the heat of the moment, we have a lot of ideas. Let's do this. Let's travel. Let's not. But then you need to, hey, are, are we still going? Are we still, is this happening? So that's a cultural thing that sometimes I bet you have to teach to or me or that comes like for interactions with Brazilians and other contexts as well. Yeah, I think that uh, I do teach culture in terms of like, they get to know me a lot during our lesson. So inevitably they're gonna know what Brazilian people are like because there's me, there's my family, there's my friends. Yeah. And there's the mainstream culture and things happening and, uh, elections and this exactly. and that and brazil and whatever everything is going on and i am inside of all of this so therefore of course i guess that what i mean by culture is more like movies and music yeah you know? yeah yeah something like more yeah. specific yeah so yeah. yeah so i have been doing that for the past three years and a half um so i started because, I mean, I love movies. Who doesn't? Do, do you? I, I think everyone likes. Not as much as you, apparently. Well, all right. Maybe TV no. shows. Like, I mean, I, I think yeah. we, we love distractions from work. Sabi, you know, like, for example, to the feeling that we are doing something productive, be it like, I don't know, listening to music or playing a sport or watching something. So, so yeah. I thought, uh, so the idea came from like this, how could I, no, not, not exactly. I, I got a bit frustrated from listening to students saying that they were watching friends double, doubled, doubled, uh, dubbed, dubbed, dubbed. Yeah. Thank you. Dubbed. So, so they were watching friends dubbed. And and then and then, or, or they would tell me Titanic dubbed, or uh -huh. American movies or American I TV shows. And then I was like, but have you ever heard of uh, Central Brazil Central Central Station? That's the, the or oh, Central do Brasil. Have you right. ever heard of this movie? And they would tell me, oh no, do Brazilian have like uh, movies brazilians do you product and, and and then i was like yeah and even among us brazilians we don't think we have like a national help me here help me out cinema movies yeah. uh, we don't watch as many brazilians movies maybe because we don't think that there are that many good movies mm -hmm. and there are amazing brazilian movies uh, but maybe most of brazilians we prefer like hollywood and things like that or foreigners movie movies yeah. but then i so so after that and trying to motivate students to do something more immersive i thought hey maybe i could recommend a movie they could watch and we could come once a month and casually like discuss. But over time, I was like watching the dynamics because it's different. Teaching 101 is entirely different from teaching groups. It's another thing, especially when we are dealing with movies that are 
somewhat sometimes political and people could get mm -hmm. like they could have strong opinions so you have sort mm -hmm. of like to mediate that because you don't want anyone getting offended or offending someone and 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 then over time I had to learn some skills, study, and prepare more, create like scripts for the discussion. So over time, it evolved to something else. So now, uh, three years mm -hmm. later, I have a course, a 10 week course, or sometimes five or seven week course. There are weeks very immersive. Uh, but but I don't think I'm answering your question. <laughs> I'm, I'm overstepping. <laughs> So when you asked me. Um, I think you <laughs> have not answered the very uh describe <laughs> what you, what describe what you're doing in two sentences <laughs> now. Go. Thank you, go. Um how do I say in English? A side note, yes, a side note. Can you believe that once I had a student who would tie me, he would say that exactly so he would come to lessons and he would say i have 30 questions we have 60 minutes you have two minutes per question time go that's and then, me yeah <laughs> and then he was like what is the difference between pretérito perfeito and perfeito two minutes and then I, I would try and but i would get desperate as the time were ending and then anyway i had to recommend that student to someone else because i was getting so I'll go now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so what is it that I do in the movie club? That's the question. Um, no, no, but I, I think that you were actually getting into the, the actual thing, which is it is it may be a five week course or a 10 week course uh, yeah. where you use movies, uh, Brazilian movies. Um, um, yeah, ju just. Uh, yeah. You're going there, yeah. Yeah, I'm going there. So so when we watch movies, we have images and we have language. So when we have those things linked together, I think that reinforces meaning. Mm -hmm. So it helps the students with so many things like understanding the way we actually talk that is different from a lesson allows them to get access to words that they wouldn't otherwise. So for example, like in a class, uh, a class is limited, is very necessary 101. But sometimes I remember that when I was learning Spanish before going to Peru, I discussed so many political and important matters, like, but I wouldn't know how to say fork and knife. Uh, I, I mm -hmm. wouldn't, I wouldn't know like basic things of like the daily language that movie mm -hmm. allows us to access. Mm -hmm. So um, the the rhythm that is different. So people they get in touch with culture tradition and slangs expressions and other brazils yeah. that there are because mm -hmm. unfortunately what i don't know about your students but mine they are very limited to sao paulo and rio it's like brazil mm -hmm. where sao paulo and rio and when they watch movies about mm -hmm. other states they learn more they learn the culture and by learning the culture and getting interested in the history and other social economic aspects of brazil they are more motivated even to go through the plateau that most students they tend to get frustrated and leave abandoned but as they are engaged with all of this feeling like a community getting access to information for example in northeast of brazil cangasso it's something that most foreigners don't know. They, they have no idea about what Cangasso is. But mm -hmm. when they watch Auto da Compadecida, Lisbelo e Prisioneiro, and um, é, o Matador, and other movies, they, 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 they feel like special that they know that information. Like Because knowledge mm -hmm. is power, they feel like, oh, I am a part of this. I am a part of society. Mm -hmm. I understand Brazilians better now. So. Once they feel like they are a part of it, 
um, they they learn better, they learn more, they don't give up. They because Portuguese is a difficult language, especially for those who don't have any background with other like Latin romantic mm -hmm. languages. It's a difficult mm -hmm. language and it's very easy for students. I don't know about yours, but speaking about mine, they learn for love. They learn to communicate with their love, with the, the family of their loved ones. But once they reach a B1, they can order food, get a Uber. They, they're, they're satisfied because it's difficult to get higher. It takes persistency mm -hmm. and they, but also they, they are constantly frustrated because B1 is not enough. Brazilians, we are very nice. We are very kind. But if you are in a barbecue with us, we won't stop to explain you. You have to. And life can be very lonely if you don't understand the language well. If you come mm -hmm. and live here. It, right. We explain, of course. Brazilians explain an expression. But you will keep losing track of the conversation. We are fast. We speak fast. We have our inside jokes. We have our cultures. It's not really possible to learn that without first maybe living here. It will be the easiest way, like living here for uh, some months, years even. Or learning through movies, learning through music, okay. learning through... And I yes, extended <laughs> two sentences, sorry. <laughs> but I'm no, done. no, no, this was great. <laughs> uh, this is great. I think it's your view on on what you, what you actually do. Mm -hmm. And as I was talking to you, I think it, that I think that it is something that my students may miss from uh, our interactions, which is the this is what I mean by the cultural aspect. I guess the different Brazils and everything like that, because I I do tend to focus a lot on pure linguistics, pure Portuguese speaking, and um, and then something that may lack is the actual sense of community and connection to the Brazilian culture in general. That is, as you said, something that keeps them from abandoning from giving up. I think I've had several students that have given up yeah, because maybe it was just us two and there was nothing beyond that. And mm -hmm. maybe the beyond that includes movies and it includes culture and this kind of uh, uh, broad exploration of Brazil as it is, you know? I think that would have helped mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, maybe, I, I don't know. But, but, you know, it's difficult to convince a student. All of my students who are part of this project, I have over 15 or maybe 20 mm -hmm. now that participates like regularly. I had to kind of convince them, talk to them, t tell them like how beneficial that is, because it's not yeah. something that people tend to think it's good. First, most foreigners, they're shy. I don't know about your students, but most of them are like, oh, my Portuguese, they're, it lacks confidence. Oh, is mm -hmm. my Portuguese enough to be like in a discussion with the other students mm -hmm. or with other Brazilians? Because I bring Brazilians for, from different regions to these meetings as well. So they, they have never, most of them have never watched a movie before in Portuguese. So mm -hmm. it is, it, it represents a challenge, but once they do it for the first time, they they see the value in it at the, at the, and then they don't leave. But first mm -hmm. I need to tell them sometimes, show them a bit of the meeting, explain that mm -hmm. it's going to be okay, that they, they can do it, they can watch a movie, they, that, that 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 is possible but it is not something that people tend to think that thing i have when once i created this project and i saw that it worked i tried to find it in other languages that i study and i couldn't and then i was like i mean I, i'm not being modest but i was like it's such an a such a great idea why yeah. can i can i find this in spanish or italian or french and I would suggest that to my teachers, but it requires an effort because it's, mm -hmm. it is not that simple. It, it, to put this together, it requires an effort from teachers and students. It's, it's not a simple thing. 
is not a simple thing to watch a movie mm -hmm. takes two hours mm -hmm. and to prepare to be there mm -hmm. on a Sunday you could be anywhere else it, it, it requires like commitment but sure. at first but then it it becomes something very valuable. It and goes from a commitment to something that you actually want to do and that you yeah. look forward to entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. They get friends. Actually... They become friends, the students and the Brazilians right. are involved. It's a social thing. Uh, right. Last meeting, a student came this Sunday with COVID and after his uh, soccer team, Barcelona, which he's like, like in love with, lost the game and then he came he was a bit angry but he came anyway and then he was with covid and uh, and sad and then he was there and he had fun and then after he thanked thanked us for taking his mind out of that so it's awesome yeah. awesome yeah social learning i think it's amazing mm -hmm. and um just commenting on what you said about um having to convince your students of course uh not convincing sometimes you tend to think that convincing is bad right if I'm yeah no trying to convince is because it's but that, that's really nice and I see that in what I do as well mm. also because I haven't found it anywhere else I don't think there's uh other or many other people doing what I have been doing the way that I have been doing and then yeah. it becomes sort of something that you have to build and you have to know how to talk about that because it's how, coming how do from you do you. you you do something very interesting how how do you convince them to the, the transcriptions and all that you approach in your mm. youtube well for one by doing it myself <laughs> i think that's the most important thing i if i believe in something that i need to be doing it myself um and um I should be doing actually the transcript and I have done um, some transcriptions in languages that I don't speak like, uh, like Czech or like uh, oh, Japanese. How? That's the point. Uh, I'm showing to them that they don't need to know anything from a language in order to do this exercise, this particular Interesting. exercise. Interesting. It's just a phonetic recognition, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so maybe... And then, yeah, uh, about my methodology, about the teaching thing, what I do is I record little bits, snippets of actual lessons with actual feedbacks. That's the methodology. That's what happens. That's that's what every one of my students can expect from any given lesson. So it's there. Mm -hmm. And if they're happy with that, uh, that is the convincing that I have for them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, convincing is not bad. It's just that I, 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 I don't know. It's, it feels like, um, you know, when I don't know if you feel that way about your idea that is very unique, but do you feel like it is your baby, your child? Yeah. And, and you wanted people to like it without you telling, yeah. look, like my baby. Oh, look how cute my baby is. <laughs> just... That's exactly it. <laughs> but That's it's exactly good. it. Actually, you know, Neil, the one that commented on that video, mm -hmm. um, he has been learning, he has been both uh, learning Portuguese with me and then by learning Portuguese, learning inevitably the methodology itself and now having his own students of English mm -hmm. and teaching by using this. And then wow. he's like, whenever he talks to me about this, he's like, but it's your baby and I don't know how it works. And he's like, yeah, it's kind of a baby, but... But now it's with you and it's going to grow with you and with your own characteristics, right? Yeah. Um, but it is kind of like a baby when you do something from scratch, like you you drop everything you knew and then you try something else and you build up on that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of a baby. It is. It is. Have you ever thought of like creating a course with your methodology either teaching teachers to do it or like in a classroom like with students doing simultaneously I don't know how how it could be done have you ever thought of it of course I, that, I would love that you yeah. know um but actually I do that I mean 
on my YouTube channel, I have those, um, I have actually an entire lesson with Neil and an entire lesson, English lesson with my sister. And just by watching that, I guess many teachers could go like, oh, that's something mm -hmm. I could be doing as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not that hard. It's not rocket science. It's just, there are principles uh, behind this apparently simple strategy. I think there are concepts you know mm -hmm. and principles that need to be respected in order for this to actually work during one hour or during one month or during one year you know mm -hmm. so but i i will end up um setting up a course or something at some point i think you should when i have I the energy <laughs> you know <laughs> Yes, I do know. I do know. It requires energy to put something together. Yeah. I admire you for that. You know, you <laughs> your thing is, yeah, it's you have PDFs and you have like a, a structure and this is going to happen and then this is going to happen. And you're going to receive this beforehand. Yeah. That's amazing. That's something Thank I have you. not done. Thank you. Thank you. But, but you know, I think things... They, they 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 build up they work over time yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. it's not overnight i remember the first right. movie club that i had like the first meeting I, I, i'm a bit ashamed of saying that but in order for the students to get to know one another i i asked them to uh, i i created like a selection of questions like what is your name uh so they could practice this where are you from how old are you what is your favorite color? What is your favorite like day of the week? It was nothing about the movie. So we watched the movie, but we were talking about other things. So over time, as I was having the meetings and I have had like over, I don't know, 200, 300 by now, I, I, I could see what works and what doesn't. So now we don't have like small talk anymore. We just go to business. We have breakout mm -hmm. rooms. I, I noticed that just asking general questions like, did you like the movie? What, what was your favorite scene? That is good, but it doesn't work. So I create um, different set of questions, put them in breakout rooms, put them to analyze different parts of the movie in a way that we can analyze the entire thing in the main room. So that was like after arrow and how do you say trial, trial and error, error. trial and error mm -hmm. a lot of error a lot but but but, but yeah. it's still it's it is still i can still see things that i can improve that's the beauty of things yeah. i guess i'm still working exactly. on it improving and trying new things so i i decided for the first time now to invite directors and actors and screenwriters and people involved yeah. i came up to them and i presented my idea because i was thinking that what if i i mean that that's a very huge big thing for even to say out loud but like dreaming big like what if i become someone like recognized Nized as like teaching Portuguese through culture for Brazilian movies. What if by people learning that way, like the industry of movies could like grow and Netflix would like ask for these directors for more movies and people would, mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I presented my dream to those directors and mm -hmm. they thought that it was really nice because actually if even if it's a small group even if i have 20 students they're watching the same movie twice three times that creates like a, a something in netflix algorithm so show something if they are recommending that movie to other people they are watching sure. so the chances of like a movie getting a second part like so so I, I'm very thankful for those directors and I'm very thankful that they are very accessible people um, right. and they are participating as well. So they come and talk to my students and I'm like, what is this? What is life even? What is this? Um, so, That's so awesome. one day, Salto Melo, one day he, ha he yeah. has never answered. He, he is a very popular actor, but maybe one day. I'll have oh, him. yeah. Do you know That's going to blow your mind when Salto, of course. Yeah. <laughs>